right, so I'm very happy to introduce our final speaker of the afternoon, Bhakti from MIT. And his title is on the board. Take it away. No, 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 uh, what we did during COVID. So, um, first of all, here's a question that we're like to advertise. <coughs> um, so, people. But starting to prove things about the question of genus versus uh, double points. Four minerals following. Uh, so you <clears throat> uh, take a four manifold and a homology class. And then, of course, you can look at the, the minimal genus of the representative. The representative, which I always do smooth topology. Um, Uh, so there's our four manifold and this basically represents the homology class. What? Yeah, yeah, only smooth. I only do smooth to follow. Uh, it's an interesting question to ask. How much can you um, trade uh, the handle of the service for double points? Want to take some of these guys uh, and replace them with, with double points. Now, uh, as far as double points are concerned, there's, there's actually a, an option. Uh, Double points come with a sign. Uh, I can't draw the picture of the sign. It used to be divided by plus or minus. Um, but of course, it, it, everything's supposed to be oriented, the surface is oriented, and then, well, at the double point side, there's the tangent space, uh, so the tangent space to the surface. Orientation agreement disagrees, and I'm assigned. And um, we'd like to know, you know, well, uh, if I look, of course, if I'm, if I'm on, in a simply connected format, I know that uh, by the way, that every class is represented by a universe sphere. So it has only double points, pluses and minuses. Uh, but um, Hurwitz doesn't let me say that there are only plus double points, only minus double points. There's some diversion. And so uh, you know, we can um, ask the following things. We can Look at it, B plus or minus, which is minimal number of double points. 
to minus the uh, for S2 inverse and for uh, representing alpha. Um, and th this question comes up um, quite an interesting version of this uh, this question. Uh, if so, e.g., if x is at a complex surface, and uh, let's take x to be the quintic surface. CP3. <laughs> um, and let's let alpha be d times the, the hyperplane. Okay, then, uh, well, we can use the junction formula to compute the, the uh, genus of d times the hyperplane class. And I think that's the answer. That thinks that's the answer. Um, so, um, in this case, um, you can imagine trying to look for uh, for representatives. Uh, this is the genus of a you know, smooth complex curve that represents this guy. Well, um, that. Complex curve is a zero set of a section of a line, holomorphic line, and a holomorphic section. And you could imagine that that line model has lots of sections. So moving in the space of sections. And as you move, level points will appear. Level points, complex co dimensional condition. Um, and you could hope to find. S2 P1 by taking a very special section. Uh, but right there. Okay, but the, the dimension of space of sections so um, Again, that's the anyway, the, the, the thing to notice in uh, you know, kind of big picture point of view, remember it's codiment, complex codimension one, this dimension is basic section, it's complex codimension one at a double point. And you notice that uh, this number grows a little bit more fast, a little bit faster with D than this. So the B is small, you can hope to find a rational curve. You can hope to find that there's, a, there's enough sections that you can eat up all of the genus, but as D gets bigger, it, 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 in the complex world, at least it becomes unlikely, not impossible. So, um, so we observe over here this genus. Bigger than the dimension of H. Now, if you manage to do this, so when you can do this, you can in algebraic geometry. Then that implies that there's uh, <clears throat> the 
the representative of plus. Exactly the genus, and um, the minus is, is zero. Um, so th this is the question that you should think of as being the most interesting to you follow. You, you want to see if you can find a way to, um, you know, can you find it uh, smoothly by the zero version on a small part. Sorry. We really that's what we really means that that we have exactly there could be another representative with fewer positive points and one negative points. No, no, they're not uh, saying you're not they're not very complicated to get this happening. Can't be the double the not very jumpy double points are always positive. So the, so the, if you have Complex term that representing the monology. It will all be well, that you might also be a minus the first of the two. Yeah, that, that's right. But say it's much. And I mean, I, I didn't make the definition precise enough to say whether this is meant to happen at the same time or not. Okay, so the question. So let's say we want it to happen at the same time. Let's compare. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, and um, so that's that's the question. And if um, you could find a good answer to this, you would be telling the operator general to stay interested because it's a, it's in general a, a conjecture. So I should say over here, there was another parameter that I could bear. And then I could count people. Maybe I could bear the, the twinting equation itself. But that, that parameter only gives me a constant change in. This number. So, because this this number grows more slowly in D than this number eventually, even when I put in that parameter, it only gets back to win. And, uh, so okay. I'm going to answer. Is this question just about the quintic surfaces? No, I don't know. I what is it open for all surfaces of P3 and all uh and all microplane sections? I mean, you know, generally speaking, it's entirely like I you know, so you certainly there's no reason no reason to restrict the clinic surface. You should think of the clinic surface as an instance of sort of the general type. Um and um that was kind of related to that sign difference. Um, so for surface of general type, you can ask the same, same question. Um, and what the, what the operator geometers think should be true is that in general, if you have um, you know, family of algebraic surfaces, uh, the universe around 
which is a version of this question. So anyway, that's check um, on. My answer to this will be accepted. Uh, but okay, so what? Um, so <clears throat> you know, it used to be quite hard to find the variance from H theory and chlorophyllology, etc., to tell you about the distinction between the double points and the fetus, but now we're starting to be a variance that, that can do that. Um, and there's some quite interesting results on some questions like that, but not, none of them seem to be able to really get at this question. Forget it. Um, some of these guys, things like that, not, um, not just getting D plus. Okay, so um, let's see. My shtick is to work with instant hunt for homology. Uh, and, um, so eventually um, we get a very uh, shape. So if we have a usual thing, could not uh, not in your link, uh, not our link. So three manifold, then. Uh, Maybe that's a knot, maybe that's a link, maybe that's just a link. Okay, it's a link. Great. Um, and then the instant of homology gets you uh, um, a, uh, well, in, in, it, in its initial version, it gives, it gives you a few magic space, whatever. Um, and it, it's factorial. Um, to help. What is surface format uh, at sigma, and it, it induces a map. But um, we can do some interesting things with this story. So, you know, of course, again, it's, this is all smooth, um, but we can uh, allow, um, so it could be non orientable. I think we could have double points. Um, and there's one other little detail in here. Um, the, the story of using the very cool by chart it involves really taking a base point in the three manifold and somehow dragging it through the, the cohortism. So um, that's a Important technical point, but it's an important point. Um, and um, so, like all four homologies, this, this is a Morse homology for some function somewhere. Um, it's for the Chern assignments function, in this case, in some space connections on the three manifold. And if you just do the, the usual construction, um, although I said sigma, sigma might be non orientable, so it might have some cross caps in it. Um, they can have some double points. Um, uh, if you do the usual construction, um, actually, um, if you so 
process. So the, the cobordism induces a map, and um, you know the surface. Like I said, it's allowed to have double points and maybe be not orientable. You, you can ask yourself, on the other hand, well, it induces a map. So does adding a handle. I can take a surface, add a handle, I get a new map. And then, um, well, you can figure out how it changes. You could so we'll be adding a handle. Or uh, and or having a uh, double point of either sign. Uh, also, both of these change the map. Actually, minus double points don't, in fact, change the map at all. Um, so whatever we're doing doesn't notice the minus double points. Um, but um, if you do the garden variety version, the adding handles or adding double points does this, the same thing. So it doesn't notice the, the difference. But um, the nice trick for refinement of floral homology. Um, so that's a usual version. Panels. I haven't learned any uh, difference between double points and genus uh, from that invariant, but, um, but uh, fundamental of the, of the configuration space that we're using is not trivial. Um, so that means you can, you can uh, use local coefficients to Amplify its ability to do what's going on. And I'm so, um, you know, just like just like in finite dimensional Morse theory, this is Morse homology. In finite dimensional Morse theory, if you have non trivial fundamental group for uh, manifold, then you can uh, do all of the um, and then we can do the same thing here. And then it, um, over here, it was a uh, Q module. Um, over here, the uh, global coefficients. Yeah. Uh, you would win uh, all complicated. I'm going to do it. Uh, you, you get coefficients in it. Uh, they're very similar. You get coefficients in all, all, all around, all along the way with. Let's say two two wrong variables, um, one of which um, so somehow T one is associated with the knot and T two is associated with the base point. So um, the base point really is there's a, a little link inside here that we're using. So but somehow the local coefficient. System picks up something, not and also stick in the base point. So it's, it's got two variables, and then um, and then this uh, this new story. With all the coefficients.
these changes are different. So all of a sudden, you're starting to have the power to distinguish between um, when. So, so in this story, the way things change is that there are um, the, the map. Multiplied by different polynomials. So then that all, all of a sudden allows you to potentially distinguish what's going on because you can if you look at your your map produced by your surface of some genus, if it doesn't have a factor of double point polynomial in it, then you can't get rid of it, you can't get it again. Exchange the double point. Uh, exchange the genus for double point. Okay, so so that'll add it. Up here, why you care? You have to write your words. Yeah, but I said some of them you want because I always put them on. Or I said some of the people. What the, how the, what's the difference in the polynomial? Do they differ by like the evolution on the right? No. No, they're, they're quite different. I mean, they're. What the, can you say? Yeah, yeah, let, let me, let me. Um, But I don't. I don't want to make you write that. But like, it's a reason. I mean, like, if you, if you look at the relative invariance of like a pair of transversely intersecting discs, you know, with positive yeah. negative sign, and then you just look at the relative invariance of that. And just, and just, yeah, it's just like the easy to conclude. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, they're just different. No. <laughs> they're they're simple polynomials. Um, and, uh, yeah, anyway, so, um, but then break the brain to compute something and see that it actually does something for you. So um in the compute. Here, then, um, if, you, if you um, go back to your um, sigma, maybe thinking of that as a complex surface, this is some complex curve, so like double complex curve. Uh, a reasonable thing to do is to, to think of, for example, um, make access to a lateral separation. Uh, and remove a couple of fibers. Um, and look at signals running around in here. Oh, it's, but it'll just pick the fibers that it's transversely. And then um, the, the three manifold that it gets 
here is the test one. Sigma G with a bunch of points. That is to say, Okay, um, so that, that means that we're, we're thinking about our three minute flow. Specifically, um, so it's a zero value, or what you're thinking about. Um, two zero, and then just much trivial. Circles times points. So that's a guy that really like to compute. Okay, I'm pretty happy to be an apple that you All right. The idea if you compute something about that with this surface, then you learn about the yeah. of other surfaces. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I mean, the, you know, the, so the, the game is uh, in this story. Um, so there are a bunch of useful things that, that we know about this. So uh, one thing is that um, you know if I have any service that has, that represents the same homology class, um, uh, Actually, it's actually a homotopy. Any homotopy to the surface can be realized by thinking of those guys and adding or getting positive double points, adding or getting double points, so positive and adding or subtracting genes. So if we know the answer for this guy, then we'll know, we might not know the answer for every other guy, but we'll know it up to the multiplying of its magic factors. And then we might be able to, so we want to hope that, that this guy just doesn't have too many factors in it. So that, that's the hope that, that, that sort of, you know, the computations are not so simple. So, um, let me say a little bit about what goes into that. Um, so, so for for our version of for homology, so we're going to take first of all Morse homology, critical points, flat connections, um, I need types of I want to um, tell you what kind of representation we're going to look at. We're going to do SU2 gauge theory, so we're not going to do SU2. Um, and, um, the way that the knot comes in is that we require representations. Y'all see. <laughs> um, and so here's why. Here's, uh, here's my knot. Um, and here's a little reading. Uh, what we want is that row of any meridian is in um, the equatorial two sphere. One minus one. That's plus you two the three sphere in the sphere in the quaternions inside here. Um, that's the units during the imaginary quaternions. 
or the things that are conjugated to the to this matrix. So we require um, that the, these the representations of the meridian uh, lie inside of the coordinate sphere. In other words, they're element they, they go to an element of order for exactly the coordinate inside of the sphere. That's the constraint. Um, and um, so the interesting thing that happens. Y K is S one times S two and S one times K points. Um, this the, the representation variety space of representation R of Y K uh, is two copies. Lab connections uh, S2 minus those K points uh, up to conjugacy uh, with the same same constraint, but now you think of the constraint is that when you go up around one of the K points, all of them lies inside this two sphere. Um, it's two copies. Because well, you know, one copy is obvious because you can make the monomy trivial of this guy. The other copy is slightly less obvious. You make the monomy be minus one, which is at the center of S U two. That's the other copy. So there, there, there are two copies. But um, this, the nice thing is that this guy are. That can be, um, that's something that appears in algebraic account. That, that's what my box space to be identified. Okay. Um, Virgin due to data, which has much less space of stable. Um, and um, what do I want to say? So, uh, so when we're doing worse homology, and all of a sudden we look at the critical points, the critical points are there, uh, points, so we kind of do a I mean, worse plot, that's what it's saying. Worse plot. 
that uh, the topology of the representation for our head. That should somehow be the beginning, maybe a chain complex that computes the homology, beginning of the construction. And um, so understanding the homology ring of just the representation of our sphere itself is a very long and illustrious story which these authors have contributed. What? It is not you. That is. His picture is there. It, it, them. <laughs> and it, there's Hans with the shirt that he was wearing yesterday. <laughs> uh, yeah, that is. Thanks. There's four boat, there's four. What? One of those visas is Bowden or four? Yeah, that's Bowden, and and somebody else. Uh, somebody, Bershatsky. But you age your board now, you can't just try to figure out what those letters are. Um, yeah, yeah, he's there too. <laughs> It should be a W squared. And there are probably other people that I forgot. But anyway, um, no more stuff. <laughs> All right. Um, so, what do we want to tell you? So, um, So one thing that's nice about the case of the sphere of no genus is that um, in, in this case, the homology of the human dimension. So that makes its when we go to floor homology, that'll be great. Um, and but um, you no. Know. So okay, then you say, uh, well, now this is become rather dull. Those people tell you what, what the rank of this group is of no different shows we can die. Homology in this case uh, is okay. you, you can see that it's also it, it, it's a ring because if I think of her dance times two sphere of effort. Points that over here have two copies of sphere, with oh, this one has a sphere with a table, over here I have one, and there's a map, which is a box. So, Also, and now something interesting can happen because um, although the, the, as a vector space, things aren't going to change when I pass the torque of the modulus function will change. It does change. And um, but, uh, I don't know how to say this. Okay. 
So, uh, So, so it's, it's two copies of the polynomial ring. We have the topology of the representation we're writing, um, and I made two copies by um, this metric I have two dimensional. So, there's vector spaces. This is true, but I provide all the options. We know one thing. So there's one interesting thing. Model structures are, are different, but they're related. So um, it turns out this is Michael Toy on the homology that you probably is the homology. It's like a general um, in the most wonderful homology, um, you have a selected handle, and if it's one homology, it's the deformation of the ordinary multiplication ordinary multiplication homology. Um, but um, and a similar thing uh, happens here. Um, and the one thing that it shares in common with these all the same thing is that it, it it's a it's a flat definition. In other words, the rank of it is chain. That's that, it's not something you know, if, if you have let's say so you know, plus a presentation of homology or a very homology, you know, the generators of the relation. Now um, the quantum homology is the definition. The relation of a particular ring, relations, form the relations. Typically, the, the dimension of rocks, as you deform the relations, it, it's a very special thing for the dimension of the motions to remain the same. That's all the time. Um, and um, I want to say let me state one theorem. So first of all, um, so one of the essences in here is Ethan Street is his thesis uh, does this. Or the novel coefficient case. Um, and what you find is that if you set the uh, so it turns out that this, this ring, if we want to present it as genera generators of relations, it's got, uh, you can generate it by a quotient of a polynomial ring. Uh, yeah. 
and then there's a similar epsilon that you have to add, but whatever um, divided by some uh, relations uh, So one relation in here is that these guys squared, squared is the same. Uh, that's on a class side here. Both well, indicate as beta. Um, and then there's some other uh, relations. Um, so it, 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 it's a rather complicated piece. There are a bunch of relations J goes between um, zero and that's one. Um, so these are some polynomials. Um, those are polynomials which satisfy the following recursion relation. Okay, so, um, so. <laughs> sorry. So far, this is in the streets there. I'll forget about the epsilon for a second. Um, this is sort of um, maybe let's spread it to Hans. Um, this is the, the cohomology ring just of the representation variety. It doesn't have an epsilon. Um, and it satisfies exactly these relations. These are sort of, um, these are, Similar to relations that are due to Chan Seeger. It's polynomials are due to Chan Seeger and this idea they depend on them. But um, they also appear in the streets where two sphere. Um, and what um, so what I said was that the instantaneous homology is supposed to be a deformation of these guys. So I should give you a deformation of the relations. And the deformation of the relations is. Um, the deformation is to add and epsilon times plus one. So, in, a, in other words, um, this bit and this bit is the, is the deformation. Um, and what's um, the, the way um, the way that um, that Street did this computation essentially was uh, that use Donaldson invariance for the two sphere times the two sphere that aren't points to um, to pin down what these extra coefficients are. Now one thing that that's um, that's really nice in this case is that you find that the um, the so 
these alphas, for example, they become operators. Take this polynomial, I can look at how it acts on, I can take alpha, look at powers of alpha acting on this quotient ring. I can ask um, what's the minimal polynomial. The minimal polynomial has, um, it has roots just exactly um, these odd integers between, uh, between 2n plus one and minus 2n plus one. Um, when we go to the twisted coefficients case, the story becomes much more complicated and you can't do the computation in just knowing the ordinary invariance of, of S2 times uh, uh, points. Um, and you have to go back to the drive board. And then we find um, uh, that you have to do the following thing. So remember, the thing that we know is that this is a flat deformation. So that means that the dimension of the who the relations, um, the dimension of the quotient doesn't change. Um, the relations themselves as far as the other policies, that we're all over there. Um, and what if the dimension of the quotient doesn't change, that means the sysities have to move the relation. And this turns out to be. The kind of zero means that's a syzygy for the unpredictable relations. And then, kind of, uh, if you notice that the, the first syzygy is, is linear in alpha and delta. Delta is whatever. Just set all the delta to you. So this guy is linear. The first syzygy doesn't involve alpha and delta at all, just involves the With that, if you think about that for a while, it tells you that there is no second system. When you extend it up, this is as far as it goes. And then general nonsense. So that means that this, these two matrices describe completely the way the system is the form. That's it. What that, you know, then you open up, you know, what's it? and Eisenberg, look at the value of a long time. And then, um, then you realize that actually, if you're lucky and you want the systems, you can figure out relations because your relations are the most part of it. Maybe. So instead of having a recursive formula, we have a combination. And here I use that part of the universe. Anyway, so um, after you said a lot of work, you know, other than I do the thing, but I think I have nothing better to do, you know, when I do this. So that's interesting. We've been affected maybe that the you're using an overcom ring on the on the homology side generally, but it's a sort of uh on tenacity of that manifold equivalent to the on tenacity of the guys. So in the quantum homology, there's two things we could have done. So what we that's a particular nice situation for quantum cohomology. And in quantum cohomology, there's two things you can do. Quantum cohomology, you can um, we can 
also the local officials. The other thing that you can do is you can perform this like the form. That would be like changing the ways. That's moving away from the final situation. And then, you know, then you know, for a while, for a little, little while, probably you still know the big relevant issue, but actually deform further. And it, the, the kind of the yoga is that the infinitesimal goes, you should be the same. I don't know this local coefficients that should locally describe the same phenomenon, but. <laughs> But you guys, you guys have varied weights too, though, and some time Yeah. Does that, does that match up? Uh, we, we didn't think about it. You know, um, that was a lot of work. Nobody read those papers. We decided to deport it. Which is in alpha. Yeah. Like, if you draw you the weight from one of the pairs, um, well, yeah, so I mean, the, what does trivial mean? Not locally, same. I mean, you have to change, you have to change some competition. Yeah, yeah. 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 And then that's the other interesting thing. Well, this, this guy. Um, So it, it might kill them from the point of view of problem that handle on this bottom is just a different that's but anyway, um, anyway, we're not doing that function because we call it competition. Can you do some example with sample manifolds uh, using the uh, base? Yeah, presumably we can. It's, yeah. I mean, um, yeah. Uh, but we have really. Good. <laughs> <laughs> One thing that one thing that makes them more complicated is the very in in this is very slowly this um as to have to yeah some interesting that they uh the complex complex example questions. But I mean, I said, I should say, what, 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 what